Welcome to Nonprofit Nerd Impact Unleashed. Get ready to dive into the world of nonprofits, where the nerdy passion and unstoppable dedication of those making a real impact is celebrated. Together with your host, Jarrett Ransom, the inspiring stories and game changing strategies of nonprofit leaders will be explored. Join us to unravel the mysteries of successful fundraising. Uncover the secrets to effective advocacy and nerd out over innovative approaches to solving social challenges. Nonprofit Nerd Impact Unleashed is your go to podcast for no nonsense discussions with real life superheroes of the nonprofit sector. Get ready to unleash your inner nerdiness and discover or rediscover how to change the world together. Now let's dive in and embrace the power of our nerdy side. Hey there and welcome. Uh, so Micah, I am thrilled to have you with me today. You know, when I was thinking of launching a podcast, what what does that look like? What is it I'm looking for? And I really found myself in a little bit of turmoil, different chapter of my life, right? Like I'm, I'm a parent, I'm um, a wife, I'm successful in my career, all these things. And like, there's a lot of deadlines and there's a lot of conflicting obligations. Like there's a lot going on. So when I think of who are the people that are rocking it? And, and as I said earlier, like seem to have everything together. I was just thrilled to have you say, yes, I'd love to join you for this conversation. So super casual conversation. Uh, but as we get started for all of our listeners, we have with us today, Micah James, uh, she is manager of professional services at Bloomerang. Welcome, Micah. Thank you. I am delighted to be here and I'm always delighted to talk to you. And it's so kind of you to think that I have some of it together. <laughs> well, you know, I think you do. I, I really do think you do. I was floored when you were a guest on the nonprofit show, which you've been on several times, um, but you shared with us about your blended family. So before we jump into that blended family, I like to start off with this question and it seems a little non-traditional, right? But like, what are all the names that you go by? What are all the hats you wear? What are all the balls you juggle? So let's start off like, you know, what names do you go by? Oh gosh, it depends on who, who you talk to in my world. Um, you know, once upon a time, uh, you know, that would have been pastor minister. Once upon a time, it would have been teacher. Um, these days it's manager, leader, um, nonprofit, consultant, certified fundraiser, um, you know, strategist, those kind of things. Um, in my personal world, it's mom or, you know, uh, my boyfriend's kids call me Micah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, my, my son is going through that transition. You probably have seen the meme where you go from mommy to mom to mom to bruh. Like, like, he's just like, whatever comes out of his mouth is what I'm supposed to respond to. He's kind of preteen. Um, yeah. So it's kind of those like grunts of a, of a preteen teenager. Oh my gosh. So, uh, so yeah, those are, those are kind of the things in my world that, that you know, all the many hats, um, you know, AFP uh, educator, um, you know, I'm on the board of uh, the local AFP. So, you know, all the things all the things. And yes, I'm in the bruh category as well. My son's <laughs> um, so there, there's a lot of, a lot of different names. I'm always fascinated by this. And so let's, let's dive into your blended family because what I am really striving to do is to normalize our conversations of how we do it all. How do we manage it all? Some days for me, I'll witness like are not pretty, they're ugly, they come with tears, but I'm still so focused on being a service to my community, right? Like that, my license plate reads be of service, like that is 100% what I'm committed to. And I'm committed to so many other things. So you have a large family commitment. What does that look like? Yeah. Um, over the last year and a half or so, that's been a real blessing for me. Um, and so, uh, my partner and I have, you know, one day at a time, uh, you know, the ages range from preteen to uh, almost college age. And so, um, navigating all of that and hormones in between and every day is a new adventure. Um, you know, one of the things that 
I really love about where he and I are in both of our journeys is that we have been through the ups and downs, left and rights of life. Um, and we're trying to be really intentional in this phase, whether that's with conversations with our kiddos or um, conversations with each other. And so um, we don't get it right every time. We definitely have fallen on our face a couple of times. Yeah. Um, but we're definitely, you know, I remember back when, you know, I was younger, it was just like, yeah, let's just go do that and and not really thinking through it. But now there's a lot more thinking through things and how it's going to impact the world and our family and all of that. So um, that probably comes with a little bit of age too. So <laughs> talking blended family, uh, six, yeah. six kids, right? Six kids. Six kiddos. Yep. Yeah. They're not all here all the time. Um, you know, managing those other parent schedules as well. So I have lots of color coding and uh, charts and graphs. Um, there's lots of spreadsheets in our world, um, not just at work. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's the other thing. We have chore charts and color coded calendars and uh, all kinds of things that help us manage the world. So I love that, Micah. I, I do too. We have a shared calendar uh, with my son's uh, dad and stepmom. Uh, we have a spreadsheet for his summer vacations and like just the planning of all of that. So I love that you're like, you know, the color coding, the calendars, the chore charts, the, the highlighters, the post-its, the spreadsheets, <laughs> you know, like it doesn't stop with me for work, but I would love to talk about how, how are you doing it all? Right. Because you're full-time at Bloomerang, you're right. full-time as, you know, a partner and a mom and all of these right. things. So in addition to the chore charts and the spreadsheets and <laughs> the color coding, like what do you find as good tools and resources, techniques even that help you manage it all? The households, the 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 work responsibilities, like what does that look like for you? I was really fortunate um, early in my career. I went to a seminar and I'm going to sound like a real big nerd um, uh, yeah. about you know, I uh, love nerds, Micah, so. <laughs> but it was, uh, it, it had to have been almost 15 years ago now, um, getting things started. I don't know if you've ever, um, uh, getting things done, I think is the name of the book. Um, and it's all about processing data points in your day. Um, and the book is about this big, um, the name of the, the writer escapes me. And it's a little bit technical. I'm not going to lie. It's not your traditional time management book. Um, but I went to a day, day and a half seminar where they walk you through the process. And it's all about like, we get a million data points in our day. And what do you do with all the data points? And, you know, um, the basics is like, if it takes less than two minutes, do it right now. If it takes more than that, put it on your schedule. Um, if it's not yours, delegate it or file it. I have, like, I consider that my superpower. Um, I, it has never left me, um, of, because before that it would just sit on my desk and like pile up and then I'd be like, Oh, I'll get back to it later. I was diagnosed with ADHD, um, last fall, but I didn't know this was that until then. Um, but I would just be like, Oh, I'll get back to it. And then it would pile up and do all these things. But this system apparently was the code breaker for that before I needed a code breaker for that. I just and, up. Is this it? Getting yeah, things done. David Allen. Yep. Okay. Yeah. David Allen, getting things done, the art of stress-free productivity. Yep. Um, and really, you know, for somebody like me who like chases squirrels all day, and I have a lot of squirrels to chase, um, you know, if it's not on my calendar or it's not written down, it's going to get lost. And it's all about having as few places that you go back to, to check for those things. Yeah. So not having 42 post-it notes or 72 lists around, but having like two or three reliable trusted places that you go for that information. And that system has never left me and I don't do it perfectly. And, you know, the, you know, real true followers of that system would probably yell at me because I probably have modified it a million times. But um, just the tenets of like having a system that works for you, 
and that's reliable and you can count on it um, made every difference in my life. Um, and that's where like, I have one calendar mm. that has all of the different things. I have one list that I write things on. I don't, you know, find random pieces of paper around the house and write it on. You know, I have, I have reliable places that I come back to. So yeah. Otherwise, it would just get lost in this game. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. And and thanks for the book recommendation, because yeah. I think we all like come across something, a book, a mm -hmm. video, something that really landed. Um, I love, I love what you just shared. And one of the things that I find myself doing, and when I get to the point where I'm not doing it well, is when I kind of have a freak out moment. And it's when I touch things too much, right? Whether it's a piece of paper, a file folder, the laundry, the grocery list. It's like, if I just want to build efficiencies, not only in my work, but also in my day-to-day right. -day life. So if I'm going from the laundry room to my bedroom, what else can I string along the way so that by the time I get to the bedroom, I'm like, I crushed it because I did X, Y, and Z on the way here. Do you find right. yourself kind of playing those own games? I do. Um, but because the way my mind works, if I lose the path that I'm on, like mm -hmm. for me, sometimes it's like, Oh, let's fix the, like, Oh, let's uh, put a loaf of bread in the bread machine. Oh, let's do like, so sometimes for me, that's even less efficient. So I think you just yeah. have to find what works for me and right. what works for you may not be the same. I yeah. will say, you know, you said something about the laundry a minute ago one of the first conversations I had with my partner is what do you do well? And what do I do well? Oh my um, God. Yeah. And he is so much better at laundry than I am. I will leave it in there for like three days <laughs> and it will think and we'll have to run it again 10 times. Um, he hates dishes. He hates when, you know, they sit there and get gross and whatever. I, I don't mind dishes. I don't mind cooking, like divide and conquer. He can do the trash and the laundry. I will do the dishes and like, and we figured out really early on, what are you good at? And what am I good at? And works like a charm. Yeah. If you can't have that conversation in your house, I highly recommend you have that conversation in your house. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we all know the articles say that women have two jobs, mm -hmm. you know, they do a full-time job and then they do what 80, 85% of the housework. Um, you need to have another conversation with the people in your house, whether it's your kids or your partners or whoever it is to help you carry that load. So I 100% agree with that. And I similarly with my husband, non gender conforming roles, right? Like he, he prides himself truly on keeping <laughs> the house clean. He started a house cleaning business. He you know, like, all of these things. He's like, you do what you love to do, what you're great at doing. And honestly, my time spent doing these things uh, proves a higher ROI than, than where he spends his time in, in the career life. And all of that is perfect because we have found our blend of success, if you will. Right. Like I, yeah. So I love that you say, you know, let's come together in our relationships, in our, you know, children's relationships. What are you great at doing? And also like, what do you enjoy doing? Because satisfaction comes from some of the mundane things, you know? I mean, I remember as a kid, I loved vacuuming because that was so satisfying. <laughs> do you find now, that? I yeah. will say with my kids that we have a rotation of chores and I have told them repeatedly, like my job as a mom is to make sure you grow up and get out of this house as a great human. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you're going to, you're going to leave this house knowing how to do laundry, knowing how to do the dishes, yeah. uh, you know, knowing how to do that stuff and some of that stuff they hate. So, you know, we can do some of the stuff you like, um, but you're also going to know how to do some of the stuff you hate before you get out of here. Yeah, no, there, there's truth in that. And that's a responsibility. We have a want to do have to do list, right? Like, oh, I love that. Yeah. Because you have to do a want to do before you can do a have to do and vice versa. Right. And so it's not all mundane, mundane, mundane. It's like, Hey, you want to do this. You got to check off a have to do, you know, whether it's pick up the backyard 
you know, dog debris. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hey, no one wants to do that, but it still has yeah. to get done, you know, kind of things like that. Do you find that your techniques and what works for you, um, you know, when it comes to all of your post-it notes in one place, your calendar in one place, does that work for your partner and kids the same? Or do they have different methods that work for them? Oh, no, a hundred percent. Everybody has their own system. Um, you know, my son is very time oriented. Um, and so always wants to know when things happen. So very much motivated by time. Um, you know, this is going to happen at this time. You have 15 minutes to accomplish this task. You know, so we've had to say, you need to shower by this time of day or, you know, those kind of things. Um, so he's very much a process person. Um, my daughter, on the other hand, is very much motivated by outcomes. Um, you know, if you do X, Y, or Z, this is what happens in your life. Um, and so, you know, just paying attention to motivating factors has been interesting because they are very different, um, across, um, all of the kids in our house. Um, and so, yeah, that's fascinating. Well, okay. I, I also like to ask, like, when was your last vacation and and what do you do <laughs> when it's like, okay, I've hit my threshold. I need to take a break. I mean, do you have like flex time with work? Do you have, what does that look like? You know, like how do you find self-care? How do you find rest? How do you build in vacation? That's a whole separate conversation, but I'd like to know what you do. Yeah. I, I will say I'm always singing, and this is not meant to be a commercial for Bloomerang, but I am always singing Bloomerang's phrases. When I started working for Bloomerang, I was a single mom. Um, and I, and when it was kind of right in the middle of that weird pandemic, we were out of the like super isolation phase, but lots of people were doing weird things with school. And my kids were doing two days on and two days off. That's what their school decided to do. There was no way that I would have survived that without Bloomerang um, because I had to be able to work and then be able to do virtual like while I was here. Um, and so, you know, the ability to, you know, adjust ever so slightly, Bloomerang has really um, been super compassionate in that regard. Um, you know, my kids homesick today, for example, <laughs> and I can check on her while I'm, while I'm doing these kinds of things. Um, and so just the balance of being able to be a mom and a manager and those kind of things. I, I talk about that regularly about Bloomerang, yeah. um, and try to talk about that with my team as well. It's like, you can't do great work unless you're a great human and you're taking care of yourself. So, right. um, talk about them guarding their calendars and all that kind of stuff. Now, I will say that the last vacation by most people's standards is probably longer than most. We did take the kids on a spring break trip last year and that was quite fun. We did Legos and aquariums and like all of those kind of things. Um, but you know, the, you know, big trip of, you know, just the two of us doing something romantic, we get away for the weekend and we yeah. do those kind of things. That's what we do. Um, we, we're kind of homebodies. We like, we like to go to the local sport game, sport game. I sound like a person who'd never been to sports before. <laughs> um, you know, we like to go to like football and basketball because we have a college here. Um, and so, uh, those kind of things, that's kind of our recharging. Um, yeah. so that's what we do. Good. Yeah, food, no, good I, I appreciate you sharing that. I do a lot of, uh, longer weekends where maybe I take a Friday or Monday off, you know, that kind of thing to juggle, uh, responsibilities, also very dedicated to the school calendar, right? Like uh -huh. our vacations or our weekends, they're dictated by the school calendar for sure. Um, so what do you do? Like, what is the thing that you go to when you're looking to recharge, you know, self-care, relaxation? I know some people, you know, they love baths, they love spa days, they love to read, maybe they journal. Yeah. Like, what is your jam? What is your jam? In that um, almost a nightly bath. Um, I'm a bubble bath gal. Yeah. Um, tea is my kind of thing. Um, love, you know, just the warm vibe of a good cup of tea. I will say that I, I am a, I'm not a, like a 
well accomplished chef by any means, but I do love cooking. And so like getting a new gadget in the kitchen, like I got a new, I won a contest at work, like Bloomerang had a contest and I bought a bread machine. So I've been like baking, I, I made cinnamon sugar bread and then did French toast. Like I, <laughs> that's, that's what I like to do. Um, and so, um, you know, and everybody around here gets to reap the benefits of my, uh, sometimes it fails. Like this weekend, I tried to make chicken and rice soup, put too much rice in, and then it just turned into exploding rice catastrophe. So, um, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think we use the same recipe because I have done the same thing with chicken and rice, Micah. And my <laughs> son was like, what is this? And I was like, I don't know. We'll add some more chicken broth or, or whatever. <laughs> but those things happen. I did hear you drop the the bread mention earlier, yeah. right? You were talking about laundry and, and moving from one room to the next. And you're like, I would, I would go off on this, you know, side path. I would, I would put bread in the maker. Did, was this like a product of the pandemic or is this a recent? Oh, no. um, I'm gluten-free. Um, and so I'm always on a quest. Gluten-free things cost 10 times more than they should. I'm always on a quest to see if I can beat the grocery store. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's a, that's a quest to see if I can make good homemade things. So that's awesome. Yeah. I, I started a sourdough, um, oh, yeah. whatever starter. Right. Yeah. And, um, I'm not one to follow it, like step-by-step. Step. So I'm not a baker. I can cook pretty, pretty okay. But mm -hmm. when I have to follow it to a science, which baking is, mm -hmm. I, that's not my jam. <laughs> yeah. My, my partner is a chemist. And so, um, my, precision and baking is not to chemist level. And so every once in a while, he just walks through the kitchen and goes, I have, I have to go. I have, I have to go. <laughs> that's it. That, that's like all I can handle. Yeah. That's really great. <laughs> I was like, it'll taste good. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it will. And yeah. And the fact that I don't follow a recipe and, and if someone in the family says, I really like this dinner, can we have it again? I'm like, probably. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe we can have it again. A yeah. version of it that, that <laughs> might happen. Um, well, as we wrap up our time, I would love Micah again, you know, for you to share a little bit about how much the culture of the workplace means to you, because I, I heard you say it earlier and everyone from Bloomerang is always so mindful to yeah. not turn anything into a Bloomerang commercial, but I just <laughs> love the environment. I love the the compassion, the empathy, the understanding, yeah. how much of that culture mm -hmm. and the environment and the understanding and the compassion you speak of really speaks to the success of you showing up as we started off earlier. Like I see you, Micah, and I'm like, she has it put together. Like she, there's <laughs> never a day that she seems down or seems frazzled. So from the outside, yeah. you look like you're crushing it. <laughs> How yeah. much of the culture plays into that? Oh, there are those days, I promise. Uh, there's a there's a stack of Dr. Peppers over here that keeps me very fueled for these conversations. Um, but no, it plays a huge part. And even even on those days where, you know, we have a, a bad moment, you know, I have I have colleagues that um do a really amazing job of of giving that kind of uh correction and love. And that's the part also that I've appreciated about Bloomerang is the they're really intentional about how that feedback comes across how all of that um you know and the reason that I sing its praises so much is because I've seen the other version um there was a there was a moment in my career probably 10 years ago that I was so stressed so burnt out that I physically couldn't take it anymore and my body just kept getting sick I got the flu and then three weeks later I got the other flu and then it was so sick that I, it turned into pneumonia. Like it was just like, I, and it was just because I was so in that constant state of stress. And, you know, I had a friend look at me and she was like, you know what this is from. And I was like, like, I couldn't, I could, I knew part of it, but I didn't know part of it. 
Um, and that was when I really kind of had to adjust some what I did. And I promised myself, like, I would never go back there. And so as I started looking for other places to work, but also as I grew in my leadership myself, I never wanted the people on my team to experience that. But I also wanted to work in a place that wouldn't allow that to happen. Right. And, you know, we're not perfect. We have our moments. We have our adjustments. We do surveys. We get feedback, you know, all of those kind of things. But I will say as a place to work this, you know, I've, I've been at Bloomerang almost three years. And one of the things I told somebody the other day is Bloomerang is now going slower so it can go faster. And it's, and what I mean by that is it is being more intentional so that it can make a bigger impact. Um, and uh, I really appreciate that about everything that we do, not only in like developing the product, but like how we, you know, I was talking to HR yesterday about uh, posting a job position. And, you know, from when I was hired to now, they're even developing job descriptions differently. And so you know, yeah, it's, it's very different. And like you said, I don't want to turn it into a Bloomerang commercial, but um, it's, it's one of the reasons I'm still here. Yeah. No, thank you. It's, it speaks to the volume, you know, the character, culture, where we work, what we put up with, uh, what's important to us. And, and also for me, I've seen, you know, how it is shifted and shaped differently over the last 13 years. And no coincidence that my son is also 13, right? So it's like <laughs> right in line with, you know, changes and evolution um, in, in those years and how it coincides with what I need as a person uh, through and through professional and personal, you know, to, to show up in this space. So well, as we wrap up our time, I just want to say thank you so much. Gratitude, immense gratitude to you, Micah James, Manager of Professional Services at Bloomerang, and also immense gratitude to Bloomerang as a whole, the company, the culture, the people, um, super rad, if that's even a word that <laughs> stays, but we'll I- We'll own it. We'll claim it. We'll just re reclaim that word. Let's claim it. I just I just love it so much. So thanks for sharing and, and really just opening up to us. Um, this whole season is about juggling acts and how we're managing all the things that we're managing. Cause I don't think that in our sector, you know, here we are often servant leadership showing up to be of service to our community and to so many others around the globe. How do we also keep and hold and retain some of that service and love and respect and boundaries for ourselves? So you dropped a lot of good wisdom. Thank you. <laughs> Anytime, you know, I'll nerd out with you any day. <laughs> Thanks, Micah. Just want to say another shout out of gratitude to Bloomerang for being this season's sponsor. So grateful to have your support in these conversations. And another shout out to that guest, amazing, talented Micah James. Again, she serves as manager of professional services at Bloomerang, where she talks a lot about intentionality. She drops a resource for a book, and she even talks about, you know, Dr. Pepper and how that gets her through her days. Thanks again for listening. Hope you enjoyed.